Welcome in, everybody, for another film session, Four Downs Film Session over here at the Draft Network. If it's your first time tapping in, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, like, subscribe for all the content that we put out over here at the Draft Network. But I'm excited today because we get the co-founder and the VP of Football Operations over here at the Draft Network. Y'all know him as a dude, but Kyle Krabs is joining today to break down a player who is starting to gain a lot of steam in this 2023 NFL draft cycle. We're talking about Hendon Hooker. Kyle, how you doing today? Uh, man, I'm, I'm excited to chop this up and cook in here a little bit. Obviously, Hooker's a really exciting player and quarterbacks themselves. There's so many layers to it to dig into. And um, it's cool to see the evolution of his game from when it, what he was at Virginia Tech to the player that he is now in Josh Heupel's offense and how they're firing on all cylinders and uh, really ingesting some enthusiasm into a, a, a draft profile like you said that maybe wasn't necessarily super anticipated at the start of the year yeah right now Hendon Hooker is currently 44th in college football in yards 1432 yards he's got 10 touchdowns zero interceptions but what's beautiful about what he's doing is QBR is 90.4 which is third in college football now a lot of people are going to have questions about his age uh, he's been in college football for quite some time, but we're going to dive into the tape. Kyle is going to walk us through what he sees and what he hopes to see moving forward with Hendon Hooker. And we'll talk about our final thoughts on him once we finish up. But Kyle, no one's here to look at us. They they want to see Hendon Hooker. So let's dive into the I tape. Don't blame him. Yeah, let's I don't dive blame into him. the tape. So let's move the middle bar out of the screen uh, really quickly. Uh, where is it at? There we go. All right. Hendon Hooker. Kyle, walk us through what we're looking here, uh, looking at here on this first play. Yeah, no, no. Some of these early clips that we have put together is just kind of a look at what Hendon can do with his athletic ability. And you see this in the pocket. There's some good and some bad here, right? The, the fact that he in his drop is able to identify first arriving pass rush threat coming out of the play fake step up in the pocket at this moment here, reset his feet. And now this is one of those areas of growth where you look at this in-breaking route that's coming across the middle of the field and this free safety that's in the middle of the field. See how his hips are open to the 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 uh, the boundary here? Yep. If you just rewind just a touch even just more touch. further than yep. this. Yeah, so come back. Right now, how he's open. Right. They're, they're trying to bracket this, right? And as his hips are open, the dig's coming across the middle. You've only got two defenders underneath to worry about, and Hendon's already stepped up in the pocket. Right. But this is pocket pocket mobility that really stands out in a good way for Hendon Hooker and the fact that I've got early penetration that's flashing across my face. I can step up in the pocket. I can reset my feet. And he sees it. He just, for whatever reason, he kind of double clutches on it. And I'm excited to see as he gets better at maneuvering in the pocket to transition and parlay out of, okay, I'm going to take early color with a free runner beating my back across my face, slide reset, just fire that thing yeah. in there right now. Yeah. You know, it's it's right there. And you can see that safety's hips were open. Yep. They weren't coming downhill. He wasn't going to get to that throw. And, and that's all staring right down the chute. So really exciting to see out of the play fake, to have the early transition to wherewithal to get himself reset up. And now that's the next step in a play like this for Hennon Hooker. And then he takes off and, and picks up some yards with his legs. And that's one of the things with Hooker, right? He is an athletic quarterback. So when things break down or he does miss a read, he does have the mobility to sort of escape that pressure. Um, but, and, and you see that right here, right? This is versus Florida. Right. Kyle, walk us through <laughs> this one again. This is one of those ones where I, I, I like to watch the route combinations and, and kind of see, okay, who's open. And then as the play keeps going and I realize, okay, like he didn't throw the ball anyway. What the hell's going on here? And then lo and behold, he hits the top of his drop. You could see Florida, and they did. Florida did this a lot, where they boxed all your routes. They left the middle of the field wide open, then they mm. were perfectly and to kind of box your routes. When Tennessee, these super wide splits where they're trying to space the field and stress you, you could see just. The, I mean, you got one defender in between the hashes on both sides <laughs> of the field, and then some. So Florida, with their zone defense, they, they're very deliberate to kind of take away and cap and make sure the splits don't cause them issues with their zone coverage landmarks but that comes at the cost of the middle of the field. So because Florida does successful job of, of boxing these coverages, now you see Hendon pull a rabbit out of his rear end here. And now all of a sudden we're off to the races and you could really see the athleticism shine with yeah. him putting the shimmy on in the open field. Uh, he's got a little bit of wiggle to him. He ends up opening the strides and you can see as he's when he is open in those strides, he eats up so much turf and can really 
uh, really make you pay if you're, you're not disciplined with your rush lanes. And it's a heck of a job extending this play here when he's got somebody in his lap like this. From an athletic standpoint, Kyle, where do you think he – what – what sort of athletic profile at the quarterback position does he remind you of in the NFL? I mean, he's not, not going to confuse him with Lamar Jackson, but wh where's he at? He's a plus athlete for a quarterback, and he's not necessarily like freakishly big. Like we see from an open field perspective, I think his speed's probably comparable to like Josh Allen, but Josh is, is much more of a dense player, and, and that gives a, a whole different layer to being able to tackle him in space where – Hennon's a little bit more wire, a little bit more high cut. And I will give him credit. He's put some weight on his frame throughout the course of his time in college football. You know, you said he's he's been around the block in college football and transitioned out of, of Virginia Tech. But um, he's pretty unique as far as his build, but he is still really smooth. Um, that, that if you play man coverage and he gets outside the pocket, he will make you pay. And you've started to see Tennessee really lean into that a little bit with some of their rollouts, sprint outs, and, and uh, some of the nakeds that they run to try and get him on the perimeter too. Absolutely. Set us up right here. So uh, LSU, here's Hooker again. We're back to the LSU game. What do we have? What are we looking at, Kyle? Yeah, so as we kind of continue to evolve, we talked about the splits against Florida, which was a game that happened earlier in the season. I love evaluating the red zone for quarterbacks. Okay. You know, when, you, when you're looking at red zone, I, I generally think that the vast majority of college football quarterbacks can execute a lot of the stuff that happens between the 20s. It's when you're backed up in your own goal line and you got a lot of congested space, when you're going into the red zone and the spacing really tests you, uh, and then your third and longs and pressure situations, that's where I really find a lot of value for evaluating college quarterbacks. So red zone target, uh, this is a throw that's on the money, but this is one of those things that challenges me a little bit with Hen and Hooker in this Tennessee offense. This is really wide open spacing for throwing in the red zone yeah. right now. He puts this throw right on the face. It's right on the money. The DB falls down. He beats it inside of that middle of the field defender, and it looks like LSU is running some kind of um, red zone man with two rats underneath where they're trying to rob anything that cuts across the middle. But this is a really hard way to make a, sa a living as a, a safety or a nickel player yeah. here when you're playing, what, 10, 12 yards off, off yep. and you got a post. Um so I, I wanted to make sure we put this one in here to look at, hey, this is really nice velocity and throw uh, from Hendon Hooker. But as you look to evaluate him, you do need to acknowledge the spacing of this Tennessee offense where they're like plus five outside the numbers with some of their perimeter splits. It creates some uh, unorthodox spacing that does allow for um, more favorable types of windows for Hooker to throw into than you would typically associate. And that's one of the things people are going to have to wrestle with with that all-time question can he do it? Yep. Can't he do it? Or is he just not asked to do it? And you hear a lot of that about the Josh Heupel offense, right? It's yeah. this is what his offense creates, this type of space, these kind of throwing windows. And when things do get congested, because this is wide open, Kyle. I mean, I'm, you know, this is this is a throw that, you know, I don't even think this is truly indicative of what you're looking for inside the red zone where it is congested. Right. And there's a lot of a lot of bodies floating around. This is it's almost pitch and catch. I mean, you're asking this DB, safety, whomever it is. It's a tough ass playing that far off on this type of throw. But the velocity is there from Hooker. So yep. what do we have right here? So this is, I believe this is the dime, the 45-yard touchdown pass where we run a hitch outside and we convert fade up here to the two-strong receiver out of the motion. And uh, this is about as pretty as it gets. So when you're looking for physical traits, you're looking for arm strength, you're looking for in rhythm throws. And, you know, he, he puts this in exactly this place that it needs to be uh, to make sure that that high post safety is not going to impact this throw either. And that high post safety wasn't, wasn't cheating to the field, right? Like when he flips and opens, he's on the hash. So that free safety is absolutely variable in this throw where this is not one of those rainbow lollipop type throws that you can just let hang up in the in there in the air you actually got to drive this thing and he drives this thing all the way through and he's letting it go on the minus side of the 50 yard line so just that really confident boom that whole strike where his yeah. you could you could see that he he slings that with a lot of confidence but it's still casual with the delivery and the fact that he's got that kind of casual velocity to drive a throw with 50 55 yard air yards is really good to see because that's a guy you know is going to be able to threaten all levels. That's of the a field. nice. That's a nice throw, Kyle. Just yeah. 
from from his mechanics. When you're looking at him, he's already in gun, right? He knows what he wants to do. Back foot kind of sets up. This is this is it's kind of kind of like he hops back a little bit, right? Kind of skips back there, but he knew what he wanted to do. He throws it with confidence. It looks like a good throw. Is this mechanically? Do you like how he looks when he launches this ball? Yeah, it's in it's in rhythm, and, and I know one of the the things that you'll look for in in quarterback play is if he's toesy or bouncy, and you can go back and watch the Florida game. He's standing there like Tom Brady in the pocket, where he's yeah. he's literally flat footed, and he's like making the read on the half field, totally flat footed. So I would much rather have a guy who is less toesy and has to kind of ignite his throwing motion with some kind of extra step as compared to a guy who's up on his feet. Cause that's where you really see the variance in his accuracy. Uh, and that's if you can't really trust where it's going, it's cause a lot of times you don't have your feet in the ground. This one, even though he kind of hitched up into it with a bounce, he absolutely had himself in, in strong throwing posture. Kyle, sometimes, you know, when I'm, when I'm scouting a, a lot of people, you know, they go to YouTube, they look at the highlights, you see the big wow throws and you never see the plays that weren't completed but I wanted to I wanted yeah. to add this clip in here. This was versus Pitt, and Pitt actually got on top of Tennessee pretty quickly in this one, and Hooker had to kind of battle back. And this play was a it was an incomplete pass. But I just want you to talk to me about the ball placement on this one because you know if this were a pro mm. wide receiver, if was a fifth right, but if this were a pro wide receiver, I'd venture to say that that he toe drags this and and gets this in the end zone. But just what do you see on this throw right here? Because it was a beauty. When I saw this, I was like, wow, what a throw by Hooker right here. Uh, put it in a spot where only his receiver can get it. But tell me what you see on this one. Yeah, I mean, this, is again, comes back to the offensive structure. And you can have the whole debate about how much that's going to translate to the next level or not. But you love the fact that you got a double move with a wide receiver against a safety with middle of the field open coverage. And you know you're going to have all that grass to throw that ball into. This is from the far hash. Yep. Like you, you could talk all you want about, oh, it's you know the the ball's spotted at the 25 yard line. When you're throwing from the far hash in the college game where the hashes are even wider, this is a big boy throw to put this thing in this exact spot. You're throwing it to the back pylon. Uh, get the pump fake obviously going to. And all of this happening with him also working a ball fake with the play fake to make sure that that you're you're getting that yep. nickel defender that you could see right there on the edge of the screen to trigger and make sure that he's not going to end up bailing out of there or anything like that. You're going to get everybody active in their run fits and stepping down towards the line of scrimmage. Resets his feet. You can kind of see kind of hops back yep. into his platform, make sure he's balanced to throw the ball. Um you can't ask for a much better throw. May, maybe if you want to get super nitpicky, he leaves this like a yard outside and would you'd rather have him put it more back towards yep. the actual back pylon yep. so that receiver doesn't have to, to fade out yep. over top of the boundary to get that throw. But when you consider where the landmark was to throw this ball and the, the shot he gives his receiver to make this play, this is 0 for 1 in the box score. I don't care. That's yeah. a strike. That's a yeah. really nice throw. Yep. All right, we've got another play. We're going back to the LSU game. So what do we have on this play right here where he so, takes a sack? <laughs> yeah, so th this one for me was one I wanted to acknowledge uh, as far as uh, the Tennessee offense. And, and the, you're not hot here, right? Because the, the back is in protection. So you have enough bodies to block everybody. I would love to see Hendon feel this safety rotating down. Okay. And, and understand that you're going to get pressure to that side because look at the route combination to the bottom of the field here. Oh. They run an outbreaking route and they run it like a shallow in. Yeah, man. And, and you're, it, if you're going to have an opportunity to feel that pressure coming, what's the saying? A lot of times you want to replace the ball with the blitz. Now, that especially applies when you're hot. You aren't hot here, and I understand that. But if you know that that safety is going to trigger and fire like this, if you have the opportunity at the line of scrimmage to pick a side to work your progression, I would want to work two over two, which you have down here to the bottom. You don't have a numbers advantage for numbers of receivers versus numbers of defenders to the top of the screen, right? If you count that safety that's up there on the 31-yard line, yep. your two, two receivers to three defenders, three defenders. To, to the tight side of the field. 
So when that safety rolls down, hey, it's two on two out here to the right. If he has that opportunity, and I can't say with any level of confidence what the predicated read is for the Tennessee offense, if he has that option to pick a side, or if it's, hey, this is the concept that we're going to work, so start to this side, and we're going to try and hit a spot throw in, in, in between zone defenders or anything like that. But I just want to acknowledge with that pressure, there's no sense of peripheral vision right. here that, that tells you that he feels that. So regardless of whether he has the flexibility or he doesn't have the flexibility, that's something that identifying pressure in the pre-snap, especially when it comes from depth like that, you'd like to see a little bit better anticipation and feel that. So should it be just ideally this receiver down here at the bottom of the screen, ball should be released to this guy right here? Yeah, in a perfect world, if you get a chance to pick a side and you know, hey, it's they're they're bringing it, so it's two on two to the to the field, and I got a shallow in breaking route, and the guy who's in the slot is in off coverage, I, that should be pitch and catch got to it. defeat. And, and and you can see, I mean, it, it's a middle down and distance. It's not as though they're facing third and long. Right. So that in breaking routes would have been right at the sticks too. Got it, got it. So you want him to be able to feel this pressure a little bit, but and should he see this? I'm just. Should he feel this? Should he see this? Well, it especially helps when you see that the the safety that is on the hash here that we're looking at now, they're pushing, right? Yeah. So he's rolling to middle of the field close. So you know that means if he's rolling that way, somebody's rolling down to the other side, regardless of what they're actually coming or not. But I thought that that safety fired from enough depth that if his eyes are right down the middle of the field as he's initiating the cadence to get he the should, snap, yeah, I should at least expect that he's going to feel that. And even if you know that you're not hot because the back's in protection, feel that and slide yeah. a little bit. And at, at least by yourself time, even if you don't have the flexibility within the offensive structure to go to the other side of the field to start your eyes. The final two plays we're going to take a look at, Kyle, are for me, when I'm looking at quarterbacks, I love the far hash to sideline throw. I just want to see them yeah. be able to make this throw. So it'll be these are two plays versus Pitt where it's the far hash, not quite sideline, but close enough. The first one he's going to miss, right? There's Cedric Tillman. He misses this one. I don't know. I don't know if we consider this off target or what, but he, he doesn't it doesn't complete the pass. Um, and then the second one, he's actually going to go back to it and hit it. So right there, doesn't hit the play, right? Incomplete. Here's another play where, again, the far hash, and it's going to be that sideline throw. I just want you to talk to me about this type of throw. Are, are these NFL throws? Is this an NFL throw we're looking at? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a tough throw, Kyle. That's a yeah. tough throw. I know this, these are plays that will never show up on a highlight tape. But when I saw it, I was like, okay, he hit this one. He missed one earlier in the game. They went right back to it, and he gets this guy right in the chest, right? Not a big game, not a highlight play, but just talk to me about the far hash to sideline throw. Yeah, and even the circumstances of the throws are similar. Now, the first one that he missed, you know, I'd be interested to, to kind of get a feel for, you know, because he actually rides a, a play fake. So there's ball handling here in the mesh point. Kind of feels like, and it, he's actually faking away from the set or fr okay. from the throw that he's making. So th that's a hard ask to open yourself away from the throw ride out the mesh point, and then open yourself back up all the way across the field to get yourself lined up to throw this ball. And I think he definitely doesn't get as much depth in his drop because he's working through the play fake here. Okay. But I love the fact that, like you said, Ray, yeah, this is this is one of those ones where you're not having a lot of separation up here to the top. You know, the receiver or the, the defender is staying patient. He's yep. staying over top. He successfully stacked you. You didn't get way over top of him and he's not bailing out of there. He's not playing bail technique cover three where his hips are open and he's flying out. So this is a, absolutely an anticipatory throw. And if you're going to miss, miss short, right? Don't, okay. don't miss inside where that right. DB is going to have a chance to do it. So I think it's a combination, just kind of looking at it at a surface level, his drop being tied to opening away from the throw that he has to make Right. Getting himself back open in the line to throw and that still being a timing throw versus this one. He doesn't have the play fake. So it's a little uh, bit. Cleaner okay. Top. Okay. You can see how much more aligned he is at the top and he kind of gets to the top of his drop. He understands where he's going. He's open right here. He's ready to throw. You can see he kind of takes that short stride, very casual velocity again, like we talked about on the bucket throw down the field and he puts that one right on the face. So I love that same thing. It's not only the far sideline throws from the, the near hash or, or from the far hash, but it's when you miss a throw early in a game 
I love to see OCs dial up the same concept yeah. and bring it back and give you another chance to hit the same throw. Don't make the same mistake twice in twice. a game. And the fact that he missed that first one, they changed the circumstances a little bit, made a little bit more straightforward, and he drills that exactly where it's supposed to be. That's nice in-game progression there from Hendon Hooker. There it is, and I lied to you all. We've got one more play from Hendon Hooker. Talk to us right here, Kyle. We're ending on sort of a, I don't know if it's a, a high note, but we got to look at everything, right? Some areas of improvement. Talk to us about yeah. this play right here. So this is one I would love for right when he gets set up to throw. Okay. Take this throw right now. This take this it. is the kind of stuff yeah. I want to see against Alabama. Yeah, right. Take you, it. You're getting ready to play Alabama. Ah. You're at the top of your drop. There's there's nobody over top. There's no threats here. That safety in the middle of the field is cutting that special route that's cutting across the hashes. So as he comes out of his play fake, he's set. He's staring at it right now. Go ahead, put that on a rope. Put it on the end of the U in LSU. Yeah. Put it on a line, and that throw to the outside is going to be there as compared to getting off your spot and then trying to extend. Uh. So just as an area for growth, and that ties back to that first play that we looked at too, Ray, right? Where you saw this really good, nice navigation of the pocket to be able to uh, sidestep that second level defender as the back picks him up late. And then you see that dig route and that safety's hips are open away from the break, throw it, right? right? That, right. that is the, the biggest thing for me. And that's going to be the biggest narrative in my mind aside of, age for Hendon Hooker is because of the spacing of the offense, the more confidence that he can show in some of these anticipatory throws early on when he immediately gets to the top of his drop and has to make that decision, the better he continues to get at that over the back half of the season is really going to be a defining quality in my mind for just how high the draft stock can be for Hendon Hooker. Because as we've seen, the arm strength's there. You see really nice flashes of accuracy. The physical traits are there. The athleticism there. There is so much to like here. Now it's just transcend the questions that exist within your offensive system and show that I have translatable throws and reps on my tape, that it doesn't matter when you ask me to make that decision. If I see it at the top of my drop, I'm going to rip it and I'm going to put it on the money. There it is, Kyle. I have learned a lot sitting here with you through this film session. I'm pretty sure everybody out there that's watching this has also learned as well. He's got three big opportunities coming up over the next four weeks. Georgia, Alabama, and Kentucky, right? He's got a, he's got a soft matchup in there. But three of the next four weeks can definitely set the stage for how we view or how the NFL views Hendon Hooker as he progresses towards the Senior Bowl. Hopefully you get an opportunity to see him in February. But Kyle, we appreciate your time. This was awesome. I appreciate you being here. Uh, I think everybody learned from this. Uh, if you enjoyed the breakdown, if you enjoyed the analysis from Kyle and myself, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, like, and subscribe to the content. And if you want the full breakdown, Kyle and our entire scouting team, we are doing full film breakdowns over in the TDN Premium Discord channel. Make sure there's a link in the description. Click that link, join the premium service and you'll be able to go through every throw. We're watching these players. This is what we do. That's what we do here at the Draft Network. So for Kyle Krabs, Ray Garvin, and the Draft Network, until next time, we're out.